capitals also not natural elements people are sitting on and kneeling on. Now being um, being an archaeologist I always ask myself why. So I like to explain the reasons behind the quantity of all these architectural elements. You can even see here on the right we have two rooms full stacked with all these um, architectural elements and fragments. Now, why are they here? They're here due to vibrations, and vibrations are mainly caused by two factors. Earthquakes, both in ancient times up to nowadays, modern times we have this area being severely affected by earthquakes. So this is the reason why all these fragments are um, in bits around us. And then traffic again. But it's not so much the surface traffic. Remember I told you the surface traffic is going right around the Colosseum and polluting it. It's the underground traffic. Because remember we met at the station Colosseum and I want you to know the next stop on the blue line is on this direction, the Circus Maximus. So we have trains and tunnels running right underneath our feet. And this is causing major vibrations to our amphitheater. So again, the reason for all these um, columns and bits around us. Now, maybe we could gather here two seconds because on the right, because I wanted you to notice. Can you please try and squeeze in so we can get people through? I wanted you to notice again the quantity of holes. Can you see how many there are? So try and imagine, please, where those round oval holes are. Try and imagine the metal cramps holding and joining together the two travertine blocks. Then we have more regular square holes, and those are a trace of where the cranes used to be positioned. Because remember, they had to lift these very heavy travertine blocks, one over the other up to 30, 40, 50 meters of height. So they were using cranes. And this is how cranes used to stick in the block. No machinery involved, only pulleys and ropes, but they were using cranes, okay? And then I would like you to imagine these being the gates, the doors into the, the theater. So try and imagine wooden doors swinging at each gate with the original Roman number as I showed you outside. Now this is when, as I told you before, when we talk about ancient Romans, I want you to think of very clever engineers. Now in the Colosseum, I want, to, I want you to know um, the structure of the Colosseum has been copied last century because our modern stadium of Roma, the Olympic Stadium, has been built 2,000 years after exactly in the same way as the Colosseum. We have three concentric rings of corridor, one inside the other. We have three levels, one over the other. We have gates running at all sides, and we have special ramps connecting the various levels inside. The only difference is this uh, Slavian amphitheater, we've reconstructed in here 50 to maximum 55,000 seats, whereas our Olympic modern stadium in Roma is containing 80,000 spectators. So it's slightly bigger, but it has been built exactly and it's the same way. So this is when the clever engineering mind worked for 2,000 years. And this is when I would like you to know in the Colosseum we have very special staircases that were planned by our Roman engineers. They're called vomitoria stairs. And they have to do with the word to vomit, unfortunately, vomitare, to throw out things. But instead of throwing things out, it's throwing people out. Because they build these staircases in the Colosseum with very special steps, high, steep steps. So this could slow down the crowds while accessing their seat. But on the other hand, going out, they would consent a quick discharge, not of things to vomit, but to people. <coughs> a kind of security exit system. <coughs> me to quickly evacuate the 55,000 people sitting and contained in the Flavian Amphitheater. Now this is when I would like you to experience the vomitoria staircases if 
um, there's two flights of stairs. If you think you prefer going through the lift, the elevator, there's an elevator right there and it's only the first floor, but I warmly suggest you try and experience what Roman spectators used to 2,000 years ago. Okay, so as you prefer, but I'm going to go up the steps here on the right. Underneath our feet, please notice the original marble floors, which have been covered by this black kind of floor, which is modern. Just to let you know, we have 18,000 visitors coming in to visit the Colosseum each day. So for this reason, we have to protect some marble floors. Again, the holes. Yes, exactly. It's I do it nearly every day and I get the half in the passage time. showcase okay well done if you think of it it was really working it was really slowing down the crowd straight on right in front of you we have a showcase and I would like you to gather around the showcase Because this is when we're going to talk about the engineering system wanted by the Romans in the stage area. Okay, I'll wait for you to climb up. Well done. <laughs> now, so just to let you know, this is a reconstruction of the stage. Remember, the stage is the core, the central part of our Flavian Amphitheater. Remember the two theatres stuck together by the stage, an oval-shaped outdoor stage where the actors were going to play their parts. Now this is the wooden floor where people, actors were standing together with the animals. Underneath the floor of the stage, please try and imagine a two-story, two-floor system of corridors and chambers where all the cages of the exotic animals were kept. Okay, so basically, through a system of trap doors cut onto the wooden floor with original Roman weights and counterweights, these cages were literally pulled up and popped out on scenes. <laughs> and if you notice, it's not only a question of cages, animals, even the environment. You can see there's a palm tree here. So even the environment these animals were living in was reconstructed theatrically. Now, instead of having an, a backstage, like in modern theatres, we have an understage in the Flavian Amphitheatre. So why were they bringing all these exotic animals out? Why were they reconstructing the environment these animals were living in? Again, for a special political propaganda reason. Remember we were talking about the processions, the triumphs? Well, in the Colosseum, in a public environment, in order to educate the crowds, I bring in all the exotic animals from my far, very, very far conquered countries. I bring them to the city, the capital city of my empire. I offer the games, the entertainment to the public, and I educate the citizens of my city. So it was a special way to show people how far the Roman Empire had reached. Because these animals were coming from the far conquered countries. So again, the political propaganda, because there was no television, no newspapers, no mass media. Now, let me show you here on the right, we have a showcase with all the findings coming from the, part, the sorry, the um, hypogeum excavation, because the hypogeum in Greek, hypo means under, geos, geum is earth. 
it's just an underground area underneath the stage and these are all the skeletons of the exotic animals we found we have the skull of a horse a bear and a boar and all these other bones here are related to animals on this panel on our left so we're talking about bears deers ostriches lions horses bears boars and wolves even and if you notice we also have a very large quantity of these very small oil lamps now just to let you know we found a massive quantity underneath the stage in the understage the hypogeum as we call it technically why do you think totally dark exactly the only light was coming in when we opened up the trap doors and suddenly an animal would be popped out and seen or an actor a gladiator otherwise it was dark so for this reason we needed light so this is why we found so many oil lamps and this is also the reason for so many fires documented in our flaming amphitheater because it was very easy to catch fire because we had oil lamps underneath and the ceiling was the wooden stage floor mm. now I'm going to take you on this side please because I want to show you um, the beautiful decorations here on our left which were once um, decorating the Colosseum I think we need to go behind this group Now we're going to turn left. And then right. Okay, we're here. Now, this is when I showed you the archaeological findings of what we found underneath the stage. These are the archaeological findings of what we found in between seats. So when we cleared the so-called cavea, the seating area, and we found traces of what our spectators used to eat and drink. Because there was no restaurant in the Colosseum, no food was sold. And the day was very long, from early in the morning until sunset, so an eight to ten hour long day and people needed to bring their packed lunch with them. So instead of having a slice of pizza or bringing a panino, a hot dog, a hamburger, we have traces found in between seats of what they used to eat. Chicken bones showing they were having chicken legs and chicken wings. We had all these sorts of various fruits, peaches, olives, cherries, grapes. Look at the fruit stones. They had um, seashells, even oysters. Lucky them, number 17. And those, number 10, are the toothpicks they used to use to clean their teeth with. And those are the vessels they used to drink from. And I want to show you something very naughty they used to do, because here on our left, I want to show you what they used to illegally carve and draw while watching their games. Executions of famous now imagine this being the part, back part of their seat, okay? So this is when they used to turn their backs and they used to illegally carve graffiti. These are ancient Roman graffiti. But they're now in a museum, so what used to be illegal is now a very important part of our history. It's giving us a lot of information. It's telling us not only how our gladiators were dressed, look at this naked torso, Ritziarius gladiator, but even the animals use the two bears fighting, can you see that? So I will always ask myself if ever our modern graffiti, our 21st century AD graffiti will ever be in a museum. It doesn't make much sense, but this is what happens to the Flavin Amphitheater. Okay? You've lost your husband. Yellow t-shirt. Yellow t-shirt. Uh, there he is. Well, would you quickly, well, we can, on the other side, you think? Yes, he is. He's right here in the corner. Okay, where you have to turn left and then left again. 
Okay. <laughs> right, so other examples of uh, graffiti here on our left. Okay, other gladiators fighting. And here, we even have an original Roman Latin inscription, Vindicamus, which in Latin, Vindicta is revenge. Let's revenge. Where these are the more formal official carvings found inside our Flavian Amphitheater. Now, I think it's about time to have a look at the real things, meaning the real structure. Uh, I'm going to take you to see the stage. We have the vomitoria stairs on our right. We are turning here on our right. Okay, I'm turning. Keep an eye on the blue flag because we don't want to get lost. Now, we're inside the Colosseum. I'm going to turn left. Here on our left, I want to show you other examples of vomitoria staircases joining and linking the different levels inside and just about now here where we are where i am these are the original floors can you see how they used to decorate floors with um, bricks set vertically in a kind of bone fish bone design now this is when i want you to know that the ground can you take pictures with that one because i'm still just recording all this. So they needed marble whereas the top levels had uh, brick flat floors. Now we're continuously walking in this corridor. What is this? Now nowadays we have an open air corridor, but in origin, 2000 years ago, I want you to know this corridor was shut, closed with a roof, a ceiling over our head. And this roof was the support for the next set of seats built over our head. So we are virtually walking in a kind of internal corridor separating two levels of seats. Now let's try and find a nice uh, portion of balcony for us so we can all overlook the stage. Now maybe here this is when you can um, use the five meters distance covered by our radio system. You can please, I just want you all overlooking the balcony. There you go. People usually stand here just a couple of minutes to take pictures, so... So, what is underneath our eyes? The stage. The central part of our Flavian Amphitheater, oval. Now, can you see where all those people are standing underneath us? That is a reconstruction of the wooden floor covering the stage. And we've learned that underneath that we had a system of chambers and corridors made out in brick, which was the hypogeum, the understage where the cages were kept. And that is perfectly visible because that is our hypogeum, where all the corridors made out in bricks are. That is our understage. Through a system of trapdoors cut into the wooden floor, Imagine these cages being popped out on scene, as we saw and talked about before. Now the stage, which used to originally cover the entire oval shape of the stage, the floor was in wood because the trapdoors were cut into the wood, but then everything was covered by sand. Why do you think sand? Exactly. It was sucking up, absorbing the blood. It was easy to clean up and it was also enabling a kind of cloud effect of sand because every time a trap door used to open up, a cloud effect of sand and suddenly a lion appearing underneath it. 
Now I want you to know that the word sand in Latin is arena. And this is the reason for us calling them arenas, because they're sand. And even in Spain, where the bulls are fighting, we call them arenas because Spain is a Latin country and there's sand to suck up the blood again. And we still use the word arena in Italian to indicate the seashore where there's sand. Now, what about seats? Can anyone see any seats around us? Exactly. They're the only visible uh, seats. And now they're very special seats because they're the only seats in marble. No, not so much the Vestal Virgins, but the senators. The senator were sitting there in the marble seats. They were the only people that had seats in marble. They had the name carved in the marble. And each time a senator would change, they used to erase the previous name and put in the new name of the new senator. So that is how we got to know those were the senator seats. Straight in front of us, ground level. Can you see there's a cross? Now, that cross has nothing to do with pagan Colosseum. That is a symbol of Christianity. That is when the Colosseum is converted from a pagan symbol into a symbol of Christianity. Remember I told you about the marble plates with the signature of the Pope? Well, that is indicating that the Colosseum is nowadays a symbol of Christianity. But that is where you have to imagine the imperial box must have been. That is where the emperor used to sit with his family. Opposite to the emperor and the imperial box, the Vestal Virgins. As I told you, the Vestal Virgins were six very important women. We saw where they were living, where they were keeping the vow of castity in the Roman Forum, and we've learned their main responsibility was to keep the fire of Roma alight, which was kept in a special temple of the goddess Vesta, the goddess of Thank you. So, the ground level had the emperor, the Vestal Virgins, together with the senators. And it was a VIP area because they were really near to all the performances. Above the senator seat, can you see this kind of melted slope going right round? Well, this was the support for the Manium Primum, the first level of seats. And this is where patricians were sitting, the noble families of Roma, Thank together you. with knights. On top of our heads, again, another melted slope. Remember we talked about the support for the next set of seats over our head? The Manium Secundum, the second level, where plebeians were sitting. Above all, on the top, top level, on the Manium Sumus in Lignes, the top level made out in wood in Latin because it would be lighter for the structure. Standing, yes, a kind of mezzanine. Standing, no seats. All the slaves, together with the women. As Augustus used to say, the women were to distract the gladiators from their fighting. So for this reason, he confined them up on the top level, together with slaves. Okay? So, as, we, uh, as I told you before, it was not only a question of a demagogic clan brought over by the Flavians, they built a venue for the entertainment of the people, a theatre, which was free of charge to come into because it wasn't a ticket having to be paid. But the emperor was opening up the Colosseum, the Flavian amphitheatre, to celebrate a birthday, an anniversary, a conquer of a very far land. So it wasn't a question of the more I pay, the better seat I get. It was a question of the more important I am, the better seat I get. So it was strictly related to the social status of the emperor, sorry, of the family coming in. And the emperor was controlling society, as I told you before. Because imagine the emperor sitting right there where the cross is, and if we were sitting above, on the second level of seats above our head, he knew exactly we must have been plebeian. So demagogic plan on one side, very controlling on the other. So think of these two sides of the story. Patricians? Yes. Yes. Now, let me show you again a reconstruction, because why are we missing all these seats? We were, we're only seeing the skeleton, the support of the seats. Why? Again, due to the quarrying. Everything has been heavily pillaged. 
in order to recycle the construction material and build other venues in our city. It's the same story as the outer skeleton. So if this is what you're seeing right now, this is the original Colosseum. Nothing but seats, travertine seats built around our arena a wooden structure covered by sand hiding the trap doors connected underneath with the hypogeum, the underground system of corridors and chambers where our cages were kept. So this is what you have to imagine. And look at the awning system from inside, the red textile awning system with the sailors maneuvering the ropes, remember? Nothing but seats. It was very easy to carve out entire blocks, seats, from the seating system to then reuse them, re-employ them to build other churches, fountains and buildings in our city. Now, another few words uh, maybe we can gather in this uh, niche here because I would like to talk about what used to happen in the Colosseum during the day. Now this is when I want you to know um, people had their membership card and relating to their social status they were sitting either on the ground level, the first level of seats, the second or the top level. Now remember they were pushing and pushing to get in they were channeled through our vomitoria staircases and once they reached their seat um, the day would start. And this was the time, morning time, for the venaciones, the animal hunts. This was when very aggressive, exotic animals were popped out of the scene and would either fight each other or uh, there were specialized gladiators fighting the animals. Now try and imagine these animals being carried from very far conquered countries and being kept in the dark underneath the stage for days and days without eating. So try and imagine how aggressively they must have come out directly on scene under the burning sun. Think of June, July, August in Roma with 55,000 people watching them. And on the other hand, think of the effect this would have made on the crowd who had never seen a lion in their life. Think of five lions, ten lions roaring simultaneously. After the morning time, the time for the Venaciones, the animal hunts, came lunchtime. This was when they used to have punishments, the capital punishments in the Colosseum. This was something um, not related with the entertainment. It was something political that had to happen here. So all the criminals and the murderers of Roman society were brought in from the Roman Forum, naked, dragged in the middle of the arena, tied to a pole, and this was when a very hungry and angry animal would be suddenly popped out and seen and would tear the guy to bits. So this is what happened at lunchtime while they were having their peach or they were nibbling their chicken leg as we saw before. It still happens in Scotland. Does it? Oh my. Early afternoon, 3 to 4 p.m., this is when you have to imagine the big day started. Try and imagine a parade of colors, imagine music, trumpets. This is when the emperor would maybe access the arena with his family. And this is when the Munera games were performed. Now the Munera games are the gladiator fights. Now who were the gladiators? They were slaves, but more precisely they were war prisoners. So together with the exotic animals coming from the far conquered lands to educate